his nature that delights and desires the truth. For he desires truth in the inward parts. And when that spirit of God as he must chew in the body, and then you have been partakers of the spirit, then there is a fellowship. There is a reunion with the body of Christ. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. The plan of reunion with God's children. Ephesians chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 1. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that she walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called with all lowliness and meekness with not suffering for bearing one another in love. Can you see that? It's not a one-way love. It's a two-way traffic. You belong to God, you have the love of God in your heart. I belong to God, I should have the love of God in my heart. And when that two-way traffic is there, I love you, you love me. That's the evidence when Christ, God is love. And because God is love, and you are reconciled to God, because God is love, and I'm reconciled to God, the two-way traffic, then we're able to have fellowship with one another. Fellowship between believers is not based on emptiness, nothingness, vacuum. It's not based on a vacuum. There is something that forms the basis of that fellowship. We are children of God. There must be that foundation. There must be that pillar of that love. That's why it says, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, for bearing one another, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. That means you love peace, I love peace, that's a foundation. That's a foundation. I love peace, you love peace. And because of that commonality, because of that common virtue, you want peace, I want peace. And because we both want peace, that means it's an evidence we belong to the Prince of Peace. It is when that foundation is there that you love peace, I love peace, you desire peace, I desire peace, you are walking, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. That both of us, we desire that peace. And you don't want to do anything that will be contrary to that peace. I don't want to do anything that will be contrary to that peace. It is that peace that unites us together in fellowship. And then it tells us now, what if that peace is about to be broken? Because we offend one another. It tells us how to restore that peace. Matthew chapter 18. In Matthew chapter 18, I'm reading from verse 15. Matthew chapter 18, verse 15, moreover. If thy brother trespass against thee, I want peace. My brother trespasses against me. I will not talk. I will not say anything. I will not ask my brother any question. I will not challenge him. He never understands me. I'm just going to be in fellowship with him. Impossible. In your heart, you still carry the grievance. In your heart, you still carry the offense. Somebody has done something contrary to the peace that should unite us together. You will go to that enemy. That's what Jesus said. Verse 15. Moreover, if thy brother trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault. Go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But Lord, I told him. And it was all argument. I even regretted. I went to tell him. And the Lord is saying, how did you tell him? 
you know, our moods affect what we tell, what we say. Our feelings affect our voice. And the judgmental spirit we already have. You know, he has done something, I feel offended. And already I'm judging him in my mind. Why do you judge him? You've not even spoken to him. You've not allowed him to defend himself. You have not allowed him to explain. Oh, it's not like that, my brother. Is that why, you know, you are coming to me? Let me tell you. This was my reason for doing. Oh, I'm sorry. If I had known that, I would not have even taken offense at all. And then we rebuild the fellowship again. And so, when you go to tell him, between you and him alone, you don't tell him over the loudspeaker, you don't tell him over the radio, you don't tell him in the public, between you and him alone, with a cool mind, and with love in your heart, with the desire to make peace and to remain in that peace, and there is no anger in your voice, and there is no anger showing on your face. And there is no judgment in your feeling. You're neutral. My brother has done this. I feel offended. Maybe he doesn't know the value or the weight of what he has done. If he shall hear me, if he says, and you know, if people do that to me, it doesn't bother me. I didn't know it will bother you, but because it bothers you, my brother, I'm sorry about it. My sister, I'm sorry about that. That's all. We have re-established that fellowship again. That's the plan of reunion with God's children. Verse 16. But if he will not hear thee, if he responds to you, and his response is not clear, he's trying to justify himself, then take with thee one or two more. You see, maybe the way I put it across was negative. Maybe the way I put it across, my brother feels I was judging him. Maybe the way I put it across, it's like, you know, I was talking as if I hated him. Maybe that's the way I came across. But I still feel offended and I still want fellowship with my brother, my sister. I will not let this go like that. We cannot be we cannot be separated indefinitely. Therefore, you take two people, other people. Why are you taking them? They are neutral. They are not in the case. They don't feel the way you feel. They are normal. And they don't have any feeling of unhappiness, of irritation, of disappointment. They are neutral. It doesn't affect them. And therefore, they are able to come from a neutral direction. And they are able to say, ah, brother, actually what, you know, your friend was talking about, this is the way you should have handled it. This is, this is plain, this is clear. Then the brother will understand that these people are neutral. They are not in the case. And therefore, you might hear at that time, look at verse 16, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. And if he neglects to hear them, how about that? If he neglects to hear them, he will not understand, like the Pharisees will not understand. He will not see the point, like the Sadducees never saw any point. He will not reason with you. Like the sinners, when, when God said, come, let us reason together. And the sinners will never reason together with God. They say, no, go your way. We're not interested. We don't want to be at peace with you. What if he behaves like that? Then it's like those publicans and sinners. If you neglect to hear them, tell it to the church. But if you neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as a heathen man and a publican. Then you'll be praying for him, O oh Lord. I thought he was my brother. I thought he had grace. I've gone all the lanes and see what has happened. Lord, just have mercy on him. Now you'll be praying for him and God will answer your prayer. I said God will answer your prayer. Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17. Verse 3. Take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, 
Can you look up for a moment? Trespass. Trespass. There is trespass against God. Transgression. That one is reaching down. And that one reaching down, the works of the flesh are this, 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 and this. That one is reaching. But between brother and brother, that one is not reaching. Your background makes you to feel offended when somebody does something like this. His own background makes him feel no problem. If that's what he wants to do, let him go ahead. It doesn't offend him. The same thing may offend A. And that thing may not offend B. Because they have different backgrounds. That one is an unwritten law. Because of your upbringing. If you were a person that, for example, when you were, living, when you were very young, your father was militant, was, you know, almost cruel and brutal. You will develop a kind of feeling towards men. And if a man does something, you remember your father. And you already equate that man with your brutal, cruel father. When you were young, you pick a face. But if your father was, you know, a loving, lovely, carefree person, that no matter what goes around the home, you know, just say, children, don't hurt yourself. That's all he says. When you grow up, if anybody does anything, you pick that from your father. The things that will offend other people will not offend you. And so, if anybody does anything, you say, oh, I'm sorry. I hope you're not hurting yourself. And that same thing, another person does it, they'll get offended. And that's the reason why from one person to the other, we don't know what will offend you, we don't know what, what, what's your mind. Therefore, if somebody does something, he may not be thinking about it. If you're offended, please, you'll go to that person. You'll say, my brother... The way you are carrying on and smiling and enjoying your life. And I am miserable because of what you did against me. And I feel offended. You feel offended? I've been watching you. You don't smile the way you used to smile. What's the offense? Ah, don't you remember? See what you did and see what you did. My brother, is that all? Why didn't you tell me? And you're having all these sleepless nights. I didn't mean anything. I was just, you know, I was teasing you. I was just enjoying myself. And then you, you rectify that. Tell one another. That's the plan of reunion with God's children. Don't say, well, it doesn't matter. I go. I, I don't, I forget it. Time will heal the wound. You'll get to the corner of your heart. You'll store it there. And if, any, if that person does something similar later, then nothing will pop up in the, from the corner of your heart. That's what he always does. Settle it before the sun goes down. Look at verse 3 again. Luke chapter 17, verse 3. Take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. Do it in love. Do it with understanding, do it with wisdom. Do it in a way he will understand. You love him, but you don't like what he has said. Or what he has done always makes a difference, always make a difference. If people feel that you hate them, they are not going to listen to the rebuke. But I love you, my brother. I appreciate you, my sister. Just one thing, just one thing that is trying to disturb our relationship. It's like when you have a little grain of sand in your eyes. It's inconvenient. It's a little thing. But my brother, can we take some water and wash it up? Rectify those things. And it says, if you repent, forgive him. If he trespasses against thee, not against God, not against God. Somebody can trespass against you and still be a child of God, be in good relationship with God. God's commandments are reaching down. Our own commandments are not reaching down. And there are, there are many shades. There are many, many things. That's why it says, if he repents, forgive him. If he trespass against thee, 
seven times in a day. That must be a criminal. No, it's you. Your own laws, they pile up like this. If somebody walks this way, it breaks one of your laws. If it goes the other way, it breaks one of your laws. If it goes the other way, it breaks one of your laws. are too many. More than the laws of God. And God said, Jesus said, if all those things will pile up, and then somebody distorts your pile, tell him you are distorted. Don't hide it. Don't just bottle it in. That thing can give you ulcer. If you bottle it in, it can give you a lot of health problems. That's why the Lord said it. If you trespass against the seven times in a day, and seven times in a day, turn again to me, saying, I'm sorry, I repent, then thou shalt forgive him. You know what I've discovered? Jesus will never tell us anything we cannot do. If he said, thou shalt forgive him, I know you can forgive. I said, I know you can forgive. And this afternoon, let's interact together. Let's interact together, brother. I remember that thing. And our fellowship has not been like it used to be because of nothing. Looks like we're trying to play it safe with one another. Okay, I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry too. And then it's ended. But somebody must bear the catch. Somebody must take the initiative and be the first person to say, if he will not come to me, I will go to him. If she will not talk to me, I will talk to her. And in that way, number one, we have a relationship with God. Number two, we have a relationship with one another. And what's the, what's the result of that? You'll be happy, you'll be healthy, you'll be joyful, you'll be peaceful, you sleep well at night, and then you will succeed in life. I said you'll succeed in life. You know, it's difficult to succeed in isolation. You by yourself alone. You need the support of other people, no matter what gift you have, no matter what ability you have. You need us. You need everybody. We need one another. And sometimes oh, we lose all the help we can get from other people because of a little grain of sand in our eye, pinching us. And we say, I will endure it. It's not just to endure it, you are going to lose a lot in life. But this afternoon, things are changing. I said, things are changing. And now you're going on for success and progress in your life in Jesus' name. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. Let's talk to the Lord in prayer. Maybe some of those laws should pile up which are not the laws of God. Maybe we have to just, you know, demolish all those private laws. That's why we feel offended too often. Don't do this, don't do this, don't do that. And let's stay with the laws of God. That's enough, that's enough. And then let's just love one another, love one another. The Lord is saying that he wants to receive us. Why don't you, why don't you come to the Lord? Jesus has paid the price. The price of our redemption. The price of our reconciliation. Say, Lord, I give myself over to you. I want to hear your prayer. I love to hear your prayer. Just talk to the Lord and say, Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you. Jesus paid the price. The price of our reconciliation. And nobody should be lost here. Already you know the truth. He will forgive you whatever sin, however deep, however offensive, however great, He will forgive. Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, I'm sorry. Just tell the Lord, thank you for Jesus who shed His blood on the cross of, Cal of Calvary for me. And in the sins are gone. The sins are forgiven. If you are backsliding, you can come back to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm so ashamed that I departed from you in such a way like that. And the shameful things I did, 